this new day saturday edition and we'll begin with our conversations um, as outlined four issues on the table to look at um, we're looking at the energy sector and plans or emerging developments therein basically to see how best we could turn things around in the sector also we're looking at the ec's deletion of the 56,772 names and whether or not the notice giving was short or was it sufficient, how are we moving forward with that? Was the EC's timetable and all? And then three, we'll be looking at the development in the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly where the former mayor, Mr. Kojogunsu, has been removed. And lastly, we're looking at ministerial appointments or nominations for ministerial appointments coming in at this time. What are the issues there and other issues around that? I have here with me um, Dr. Ahmed Jnapo. He's a senior lecturer at the University of Education, Winneba. And Mr. Kwame Jantua, he is a senior member of the Convention People's Party, CPP, and also an energy expert. So we'll begin the conversations. We're welcome, by the way, gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's good to have you here, as usual. We're starting off the conversation with the, um, let's start off with the nominations for appointment by <coughs> the president. We have some issues coming up with that. The minority in parliament has raised issues about the timing and all of that. Um, Mr. Jantua, your take on this matter. Nominations coming in about four or five months to elections. Good morning to our fellow viewers. And um, yes, I found it a bit strange. We are, I still maintain that we are having elections December 7th. Mm. So that's the way I look at it, till anything changes where Parliament is concerned in terms of the date. And I don't know the reasoning why the President has decided to, you know, elect <coughs> or choose new ministerial positions at this time. <coughs> he has his own agenda. He probably knows why he's done it. He probably feels that he needs to show up those ministerial uh, uh, areas or those ministries that he's uh, appointed ministers to and he hasn't given us any reasons. I continuously think that when a president chooses people to run certain ministries at a particular moment in time like this, at least some explanations should accrue to the people mm. because it's the people who put the president in and the people like you know we are sitting here and we are discussing it and you know um rumors would just run awry in terms of why the president has done it at this particular moment in time but i must say he has his reasons and mm -hmm. poss probably down the ro down the road you know we would know why he's done it but if we don't then c'est la vie very well much we can do Doc. well let me say good morning to your cherished uh, viewers i i I seem to differ a little bit from uh, uh, my uncle <laughs> in the sense that, one, uh, when ministerial appointments are given, I mean, questions that need to be asked are, is it that within the remit of the law that the president break any law? The answer is no. Two, we are not talking of a ministerial reshuffle. These individuals are not going to replace people in other ministries. Mm -hmm. We are talking of uh, a deputy minister for foreign affairs, which I think there's already one there, so maybe because of uh, some reasons, as he rightly exactly, said, that's what he's uh, we need somebody more to add to. Two, we are talking of a deputy minister for local government. Uh, local government, as you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's grown. Maybe we need another person. And I'm even surprised that a ministry like local government, for all this while, have had just one deputy minister. Uh, I, I think uh, 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 it's something that should have been taken care of a long time because local governance is, and it's not local government, it's local government and rural, uh, rural development. Mm -hmm. So you need somebody or two people at least to be there. Then I think that there's a third one, I don't remember mm -hmm. the... the uh, I think it's recent, I, 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 yeah, I, I forgot about that. But I think the question that needs to be asked is, yes, probably the opposition have a good cause to say that it is too late for the president to appoint a minister at this particular point in time. But my question is, even today, as we speak, today, three to four months to elections, we have a, a, a by-election going on. Abitifi, 
today. Mm -hmm. Abiti fit today, he is going to be. But they are not the same. No, no, no. We are talking of the. We are looking yeah, at it. No, it's an, not, it's you, an you, analogy. You, no, you can't. No, it's an analogy. You can. Why you not? Can't compare the you two. can. Even this okay. one, the, the election is even more serious because you are spending money to to to. When you are done, explain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, are, you are you are you are spending money to 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 elect somebody. Within a few months, there's going to be another election. But you can't do anything about it because that's what the constitution says. But the local government elections will come in for um, not immediately after. No, no there's going to, yeah, there's going to be a, another election where they are having it today in Abuja. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just giving an analogy. Right. So if a minister is appointed at this particular point in time, let's say if there's a demise of a minister, does that mean that the place should be left vacant because it's close to elections? I don't think so. That said, the opposition has a case. There's some reason in it. Mm -hmm. Recently, when Obama was appointing a, 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 a Supreme Court justice in the United States, the opposition blocked it. They said, no, no, you have to wait. You are leaving the presidency in a few what? In a few months' time. Allow the person who takes over to what appoint because of the sensitive nature of and because what that, with that one the supreme court uh, the constitution of the supreme court would go beyond the tenure of which sure, government is of course, so of that course. one has long term, long -term implications, implications. This, one, this they would yeah, go with and, the and even anyway, this and even so this if you ask the president the president will tell you that look i'm not leaving office in 20 in 2017 <laughs> you understand so what are you talking about the short period these are people that i'm appointing because I'm of the conviction that 2017, I'll still be the president, and they will still be what? My deputy ministers. That said, Abana, I think we, we, we should be interested in interrogating the caliber of people who have been appointed. Who is Emmanuel Bombandi? What does he bring to the Foreign Affairs uh, Ministry? I mean, what is his track record? Does he add anything new? These are the things that we need to be asking. You understand? And I believe that at the end of the day, Parliament at its appointment committee will get the opportunity to what? To cross-examine these individuals and more or less to make a determination as to whether they, 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 are, they are competent position. enough or not. And uh, I mean, I, I don't even, I, I don't know their political affiliation because I know... It I, should I, that I, even matter? Yeah, it should. Their political affiliation? Yeah, it should. It should. It should in both ways. It should in the sense that one, if the person is an NDC person, that means the person buys into the philosophical orientation of the president. If the person is not an NDC person, what it means is that the, pers uh, the president is somebody who is reaching out to what other people outside his, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, his, his political. Uh, so depending on which political uh, 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 pendulum they swing to, it's important for us to know. Or if the person is a neutral person, you understand? Mm -hmm. Is this person just an ordinary Ghanaian who speaks his mind? And and we have most of these names are names that are popular in Ghana. You know. So I think I think we need to be asking questions, and I would expect that uh, Parliament during its vetting will do a good job for us Ghanaians to be given the opportunity to what to know them better. Mm. As to whether the timing is wrong or not. I personally do not have a problem with that mm. because even if you remember, you remember uh, uh, in 2007, opening in 2007 when we had uh, uh, the NDC primaries, we have about is it 14 or so some of them ministers who had to resign because of the NDC policy. But Kofor appointed people to occupy those positions, and you can I can say for a fact that there are some of them who were appointed. They call them last minute ministers who did extremely well. <coughs> you know, a day in government. Means well, I think you talked about vetting, yeah, and I believe that's where the minority in parliament has raised issues. As in this, um, it's close to elections, they would be, 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 be campaigning or going to their constituencies to do that. Now they would have to sit for this vetting of. Um, the nomi nominees and all of that. So those are some of the issues that have come up. Well, I think, from I, the think I think side. those 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 are legitimate. Those are legitimate uh, 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 concerns. But but at the end of the day, I think it's also important. Look, they can they can navigate. They are they are, they are called to national duty. That is what it is. Mm -hmm. So they can navigate. I mean, around all these concerns, and I believe that uh, something can be done about it. But you see, my my, my point is that. The, the debate should center on the competence of these individuals. Mm. You are appointing somebody to become, uh, uh, I mean, a deputy minister for foreign affairs and regional integration. What is his background? I mean, I'm not in any way trying to question their, their background because, mm. as I said, most of them are people that we know in the public domain. Today, as we speak, just not too long ago, there, there was a coup attempt in Turkey. You know, 
how does the person approach these issues? I mean, how the, what knowledge does he bring to bear when it comes to these positions that they are being given? <coughs> Today, as we speak, Abuna, we are going to talk about uh, local uh, uh, Bunsu, local government. You remember the tango that went on between what chieftaincy and what and 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 uh, and, and, and the mayor. Mm -hmm. What is the role and position of the deputy minister, and what is his know-how in terms of trying to what, deal with some of these issues? I think competence should be the key word when it comes to uh, interrogating the, the appointment being made. Very well. Mr. Jantua, you had a reaction to um, Doc's statement earlier. Yes, you will touch on that, but, but I would also want you to <laughs> tie in what he says about the emphasis or the focus should be more on competence and not the timing. That really timing um, doesn't matter. Once uh, the nominee has been presented, let's go on, ask the questions, the salient questions that we need to ask, which for him is competence. Can't they do the job? I think competence runs through everything. It's, it's the bedrock of putting people in position mm -hmm. so that you know they can do the work. And the president has his own reasons why he's chosen these people to run these uh, uh, positions. Mm -hmm. But the question I ask is that, we are saying that, you know, throughout this duration that the ministry didn't have a deputy minister, what was going on? How was it being run? Mm. Why is it that at this 99th minute that the president <laughs> realizes that, ah, the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs needs a, a new a deputy. Uh, de deputy? How many months to elections? Really and truly, four months, five months to elections, or three to four months to elections, what you concentrate on is campaigning. Listen to what happened in Parliament yesterday, where Honorable uh, Akutose was pleading with the uh, uh, Speaker to balance parliamentarians going out to campaign and also having to pass the laws that they have to pass in Parliament before the, 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 the year of the Parliament ends. And so, really and truly, the timing of everything too is very important. I think reason should be given why at this 99th minute the president has decided to appoint other people. Now, the difference I was, was talking about when uh, Doc. Uh, Doc was talking about Betifi having a new parliament and then comparing it to the ministry, where a constituency is concerned, and the constitution states that every constituency should have a member in parliament. And so if there's a gap, Needs somebody to needs to, <coughs> to be elected to represent the people in that area. And that's the difference. Where the ministerial appointment is concerned, it is at the whims and caprices of the president. It, it, you know, it's not the people who tell him that, uh, elect this person here or put this person or put that. It is under his own stewardship and his own power that he will put somebody there. And so, for me, that's the difference. Well, yes, he's done it. Mm. And what Doc is saying, the competence is very important whether the person who they have put there can actually do the job can actually articulate the views of the country because foreign affairs is you know, open up to mm. the whole world whether they have the wherewithal to be able to do that and mm. let's see mm. four to five months let's see what they bring to what the happens. table I, i'm coming back to you doc you raised the issue about timing not being an issue that a day in government could make a difference so if that's the case, then how come we still, um, I mean, when I heard these appointments, I was wondering, or these nominations, um, that the, the, the power ministry is still vacant. And this is a critical <laughs> vacancy that needs to be filled, given the current. Is it vacant? I thought we have a. Uh, no, but, the, but, the, but exactly. And the, the acting minister, who is the minister for finance, is himself burdened with his own sector. So why then do we, if indeed we could have. Why, why is it still vacant? Is, is, is Let me, I, I wouldn't be able to answer. Because Very I'm well, but, but I'm just going down. along the lines of the fact that if back, a day... I'll go back to what you said. Exactly, so yes. Yeah, let me, let me, let me, <laughs> okay, let me, I'm let me, let me, let me. Yes. <laughs> you see, uh, every ministry in this country or every government appointment position, any appointment from D.C. up to the, the minister, is a position that you are more or less acting on behalf of the president. It's very important to state that. Any position, ministerial position that you occupy in this country, Minister for Defense, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Minister for, you are acting on behalf of the president. 
So the president at a point in time can say, and I think uh, 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 when it comes to attorney general, attorney general, they have certain specifications of who should be in that position. You need to be somebody with a legal background. Finance, I can be a minister for finance, even though I'm an educationist. Provided you can do the job. No, no, that's it, even though I'm an educationist. Mm -hmm. The point that I'm trying to make here is that the president has the discretion to appoint people at certain positions based on his will and time. Buhari, President Buhari, when he became uh, president... I think that is a no doubt. That, that is not disputed, yes. No, so yeah, yeah, no, um, you, you, no you're asking the question that, yes. about uh, 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 the, the power. power ministry. Buhari, when he came, he took over the power ministry. He was the minister for power. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He was the minister for power. The point that I'm trying to make here is that Look at the people who have been appointed. One of them is Deputy Eastern Regional Minister. Deputy Eastern Regional Minister. Eastern Region, they don't have what? A Deputy Minister. So you look at a region like Eastern Region. The minister is not there. We are an, an election year. You know how Eastern Region is a competitive uh, uh, sport. NDC says, MPP says they are going what? 100%. You need somebody to be a lieutenant to the minister. There's no doubt about it. You come to look at government. So are you but, saying that these are strategic last minutes? Well, I wouldn't say last minute. I think the argument that is being made and is being reiterated by opinion is that they have some few months to go for campaign. I think this whole excuse is becoming too much of, uh, uh, for me. I mean, I, 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 have, I have problems with it. In the sense, I'm not, if, if you think that four to five months time you need to go and campaign, then parliament should close four to five months. They shouldn't do any business. The fact of the matter is that you are elected for four years. Simple as that. Your tenure ends when the new parliament is being sworn in. So if there's work to be done, you need to stay and do it. If there's work to be done. If, if, if the opposition was raising the issue, of, after all, I mean, is it only the opposition who is going to campaign? <laughs> that the NDC will also go to campaign. So if they had a problem with the candidates, if they think that, look, these individuals who have been nominated have some specific problems, then they have a case to make. And mm. I think that should be demonstrated during the vetting. But the whole excuse that, uh, look, uh, because we are getting close to elections, we need time to campaign, I don't think but it's But, Doc, you didn't answer my question about the yes. power ministry. The power ministry, I told you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? No, I wouldn't okay. know. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to appoint an authority. Uh, my <laughs> premise is this, that if, you know, Doc earlier on said that really doesn't matter what time nominations are made or for that matter what time appointments are made because a day in governance could make a difference and I'm asking we have a critical sector like the power ministry which is currently vacant you have an already burdened or overburdened minister of finance mm -hmm. doubling as the acting power minister given the context of the challenging times we have in the energy sector wouldn't that be one of the areas you would want to see somebody come in at the last minute for us to see what of a difference or what much of a difference that person could bring? It's, been, vac it's been vacant for how long now? Since, um, is it January? Exactly. So I go back to Doc's uh, uh, question. Is the finance minister the right person to run the power ministry in terms of competence? I ask that question. Because the technicalities of power has really got nothing to do with how you run the finance ministry. You don't need to be an engineer to well, be a power it, minister. It, it does, <laughs> you don't no, need to be an engineer. But you need... You, it, 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 it's, not, it's leadership. It's not a question of being an engineer. It's a question of understanding those technicalities. It's a question of understanding. There are certain ministries where, yes, you can put any kweku abna in there. But there are certain ministries where you need technical expertise. And a typical example is Brazil. In Brazil, if you haven't been in the energy sector, the oil and gas sector, you cannot be an oil and gas petroleum uh, minister. Mm. You can't because of the technicalities of it, because of the kinds of people you are dealing with in the industry. And so, I, really and truly, I don't understand why the president, with this duration of time to elections, has not put his brother in place as minister for uh, 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 power. Because he seems to be the one doing all the work. He seems to be the face of the power ministry. He seems to understand exactly what is going on. How many times have you heard Sir Tepe talk real power issues? No. The last time I heard him talk 
was on uh, Joy FM. And it was more to do with the finance, financial bits of how they, 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 they run the, the power ministry, not the actual technical bits of it. And so, would you say Sektepe is the right person to be, especially with the heavy burden of the <coughs> finance ministry, to be the one to run the power ministry? Mm. And, okay. So, okay. and so, I'm, I'm kind of um, uh, bemused and betwixt by the way the president is probably uh, appointing and not appointing, mm. and the kinds of uh, people he probably feels are competent enough to run certain right. ministries. Well, the reason why I'm asking is, is how many times, uh, what's the length to mm -hmm. uh, elections? Very short. So probably he feels we don't need a power minister. Exactly. Which comes to time. which? Which is what um, the argument from from certain quarters is that then perhaps it goes to show that indeed the creation of a power ministry was perhaps in the in the in the pr where we had a an energy ministry then perhaps it was it wasn't necessarily um uh, the the best of if you like um decisions to make abna i think that where the power ministry was concerned i think it was a perfect decision to have a power minister mm -hmm. at the present moment when you look at petroleum we have only one oil field which is the jubilee field come between now and 2025 the number of uh, companies that will be exploring and producing oil will be huge. Mm. Do you, can you imagine the kind of workload on the Minister of Energy if it was one minister? Right. So I think creating a power that, minister uh, was, 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 a, was, perfect was idea. a perfect idea. Very well.